CNN journalist Larry Madowom, taking to his ex account, has exposed some rogue element trying to intimidate him ahead of Gen Z's next week's planned actions. I want us to have a look at the post by Larry Madohom, for it's going to inform the basis of our analysis. Before we do that, let me say this. Any government trying to use intimidation and threats to silence its critics, that's a weak government that has failed to deliver. So it does not want people to talk out against its failures. So if Ruto's government is doing that, then there is no doubt that's a government that has failed to deliver. Since Gen Z started these protests, there have been several kidnappings, threats, and intimidations. All that confirms Ruto has failed to deliver. He has nothing that he can challenge the critics other than through threats. Let's have a look at Larry's post. Larry Madowom, Juma MC, wewe umeanza ujinga tutakupasua. We will deal with you. The person threatening Larry is called Juma MC. And the person is telling Larry, umeanza ujinga tutakupasua. We will deal with you. Let's have a look at some responses from Kenyans upon Larry posting that. K.O.T. Snitch, Occupy Churches, 30th June, thus tomorrow. Gen Z have announced that they will be occupying churches tomorrow. Kelvin Kiptom, we demand respect to this legend. Graduate, pathetic people and toxic, AFC Kuno, you shouldn't be scared, Larry. Five million Nairobians will be protecting you on Tuesday. Graduate, Vitisho Baridi, and then he has attached a post by Moses Kurian. All civil servants' children in, involved in the protest will be fired. There is somebody called Di Capo. Wambie, Hautishiki, Ruto must go. And then somebody called Sports Arena TZ. God is our leader. The rest we don't know. Then somebody called Kathy Mutuku, put the account here, we search the owner. Kelvin Kipto, respect Larry Madowo. Alchemist, we all die even those who threaten us have their day to cash Ruto minions. Those are some of the responses upon Larry sharing that post. I want us to dig deep into this for Kenyans to understand what's happening here. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give the video a like. Let's proceed. William Ruto is under siege. Everything he does ends up failing. And now with the split in Kenya Kwanzaa government, things are even turning out to be more difficult for Ruto. A few days ago, Rigati Gashagwa revealed that NIS are the ones kidnapping Kenyans. That they are the ones most probably responsible for all these threats and kidnappings we have been seeing. If you look at this story very objectively, William Ruto is shooting himself on the foot. 
All these threats are only helping in hardening Kenyans' positions. Kenyans are being hardened as Ruto's government threatens them on a daily basis. We all fought for the new constitution that gives Kenyans the right to free speech. Threatening a journalist, and more so an international journalist, confirms that Ruto's government does not want Kenyans to understand what's going on behind the scenes. So even this dialogue, he's calling with the Gen Z's, these are just PR. Inwardly, he does not want dialogue. He is a very bitter and a very revengeful person. All these calls for dialogue are all PR games being played. Ruto inwardly is very bitter and is out to revenge. If you look at this Kenya Kwanzaa government, it's almost certain and very clear Ruto does not want Kenyans to be hurt. That's why he has unleashed the police, the army, to suppress innocent demonstrating Kenyans. He does not want the voices of Kenyans to be heard. If you look at Larry Madoho, Larry Madoho has taken the Kenyan situation to the international community. In fact, it's through Larry Madoho's reporting that America, UN, and other countries have called Ruto to order. And it's also through that reporting that most definitely William Ruto's friends, who are soon dumping him, America, called him and told him to go slow. So Larry Maddow has played a very vital part in informing the world of the Kenyan situation. So by threatening Larry Maddow, it's like the people threatening him are clearly stepping on Kenyan toes. And some of these issues are the ones making Gen Z's to even protest more against Ruto's government. If you look at the reasons why Gen Z's are protesting, they are protesting on how William Ruto has run the government in the under two years of his administration. But it appears on this other side, Ruto is calling for dialogue and peace, but on this other side, some of his rogue agents are threatening Kenyans. And I'm saying that because this individual sending threats and kidnapping people, it's clear they are from the government. And that has been confirmed not once, not twice. So it's clear Larry Mado here is being threatened by none other than a rogue element in William Ruto's government. And now, what's the way forward? I honestly believe that to beat or to defeat such rogue elements, then Kenyans must all come out to condemn such instances where a journalist is being threatened. In fact, the Gen Z's should make it as one demand mm, that journalists should not be threatened because these journalists are the ones who are informing the international community and that's why we are seeing Kenyans protesting at The Hague, demanding for William Ruto's cases to be revived. So Gen Z should also consider this as one of their demands. No threatening of journalists. No threatening of Kenyans. Let everybody speak his mind. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. If you are watching us but you have not yet subscribed, subscribe, give this video a like. Any other person watching us outside Kenya, drop a comment, let us know from which part of the globe you are watching us from. If possible, subscribe, give the video a like. The threats on Larry Madon confirms the government has no case against Larry. They can't take him to court. They don't have any case 
against him. So the only option is to use threats and intimidations. Let me stop it there, ladies and gentlemen. God bless you. God bless Kenya.